बिस्मिल्लाम असल मैं हूँ सभी काजमी और नाजीन आज का शो बड़ा अहम है उसकी वजह यह कि जिस तरह आपको ने देखा कि न्यूजीलैंड का टूर पाकिस्तान में कैंसिल हुआ उस पर फैंस पाकिस्तानी लोग और जिस जिस बंदे का भी क्रिकेट से और पाकिस्तान से किसी तरह का भी तल्लक है वो इस वक्त दिल गरफ्ता बहुत ज़्यादा परेशान दुखी नजर आया लेकिन मैं आपको सच बताऊँ ये कोई इतना बड़ा मसला नहीं है हम लोगों ने इससे ज़्यादा टफ टाइम देखा हुआ है हम लोगों ने वो वक्त भी देखा है कि जब पाकिस्तान में कोई इंटरनेशनल टीम नहीं आती थी और हमारी क्रिकेट के दरवाजे मुकम्मल बंद हो गए और हमसे भी ज़्यादा टफ टाइम जो है वो साउथ अफ्रीका ने देखा होगा जहाँ पर क्रिकेट मुकम्मल तौर पर बंद रही लेकिन जब वो लोग नाइन्टी टू में वापस आए तो उन्होंने सेमीफाइनल तक क्वालिफाई की और दुनिया की एक बेहतरीन टीम के तौर पर आज नजर आ रहे हैं पाकिस्तान ने भी आपको याद होगा टी ट्वेंटी वर्ल्ड कप भी जीता और पाकिस्तान ने दुनिया के बड़े मुल्कों में उस वक्त जाकर अपने झंडे गाड़े बगैर इंटरनेशनल क्रिकेट को होते हुए भी इसलिए ये होना कि पाकिस्तान में ज़रूर जब तक इंटरनेशनल क्रिकेट के ऐसे प्लेयर ना आए क्रिकेट नहीं हो सकती ये तो बिल्कुल ही गलत बात है दूसरा पाकिस्तान में आप देखें कि वेस्ट इंडीज़ की टीम आई साउथ अफ्रीका की टीम आई श्रीलंका की टीम आई इसके अलावा वर्ल्ड एलेवन की टीम आई पी की कामयाब सीज़न हुए और ये चीज़ साबित करती है कि पाकिस्तान मुकम्मल तौर पर एक सेफ और पुरमन मुल्क है यहाँ पर है लेकिन एक चीज़ हमें याद रखना होगा कि हमारे खत्े में इस वक्त बहुत बड़ी तब्दीलियाँ आ रही हैं इंटरनेशनल लेवल पर बहुत बड़ी तब्दीलियाँ हमारे साथ पड़ोसी मुल्क में जो हुआ वो दुनिया के सामने और सबसे बढ़कर आपको याद होगा कि पाकिस्तान की क्रिकेट के लिए हमेशा से मसाइल रहे हैं हम शुरू दिन से जब से हम क्रिकेट में क्या बल्कि दुनिया की किसी भी फील्ड में हमें इन्हीं मसाइल से गुजर कर जाना है और ये इलामा इकबाल का शेर आपने सुना है तुंदी ये बादे मुखालिफ से ना घबरा है उकाब ये तो चलती है तो ये और ऊंचा उड़ाने के लिए <coughs> तो बात यही है कि ये तो आपको और मजीद टफ करते हैं मुश्किल इतनी आती हैं उसी से ही हम लोग पक कर सोने की तरह कुंदन बनते हैं दुनिया इस वक्त क्या सोच रही है और सबसे बढ़कर एक और मैं जो चीज़ अहम बात जो ऐड करना चाहूँगा कि न्यूजीलैंड और ऑस्ट्रेलिया के कुछ प्लेयर से मेरी बातचीत हुई तो न्यूजीलैंड के प्लेयर से कुछ बात की है वो कह रहे हैं कि हम लोग जब यहाँ से निकले हैं पाकिस्तान से तो हम लोग खुशी सी नहीं गए हम लोग बहुत परेशान थे हम लोग दुखी थे हमारे दिल यहाँ पर लग चुके थे <coughs> पाकिस्तान आने तक जो मुश्किल हमें थी आपको पता है दुनिया मना कर दिया अठारह साल का एक अरसा लगा था तो उन्होंने बड़ी मुश्किल से वो तमाम रुकावटें उन्होंने अबूर करके वो पाकिस्तान आए उन्होंने खेलना था वो इस तरह की कोई गेम करने नहीं आए अब उनके ऊपर प्रेशर कितना डेवलप हुआ किस तरफ से प्रेशर डेवलप हुआ कि आपको निकलना है आपको छोड़ना है लेकिन प्लेयर्स और जो टीम के लोग हैं और जो न्यूजीलैंड के लोग हैं वो लोग बिल्कुल भी सिचुएशन से खुश नहीं है ना ही उन्होंने ये जान किया है कि वो वहाँ से निकलें अब उनकी मजबूरी ऐसी बन गई कि उन्हें निकलना पड़ा और ये मजबूरी बनाने वाले कौन से ममालिक हैं आप अच्छी तरह जानते हैं उन्हें किस तरह जो हमारी क्रिकेट को तबाह करने की कोशिश करते रहे लोग एक अरसे से लगे हुए हैं एक अरसे से कोशिशें कर रहे हैं और ना सिर्फ क्रिकेट की बल्कि पाकिस्तान की बका की जो आपको पता है कि लड़ाई बड़े अरसे से चल रही है वो भी चलती रही अब ये सारे मामलात होंगे और हमें अब खुद मुख्तारी चाहिए तो खुद मुख्तारी की एक बड़ी कीमत हमें अदा करनी है एक सीरीज गई है एक मुल्क गया है इसलिए आप उस पर ज़्यादा परेशान ना हो बड़े प्लेयर्स जो कि इस तरह की ट्वीट्स कर रहे थे जी कि बड़ा जुल्म हो गया हमारी क्रिकेट बंद होगी खत्म होगी ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं होगा दूसरा वो सियासतदान और वो घटिया मैं कहूंगा वो जो सियासतदान के अलावा जो मीडिया के लोग हैं जिस पर खुश हैं वो इस पर खुश हैं कि इमरान खान का मुल्क पाकिस्तान जैसे उनका नहीं है कुछ की जाती रंजिशें कुछ के टी शो फ्लॉप्स हुए कुछ की सियासत खत्म हुई कुछ के माँ बाप चोरी चिकारी आपको पता है डकैतियों में पकड़े हुए हैं दुनिया से भागे हुए हैं भगोड़े हैं मुलजम हैं मुजरम हैं अब उन लोगों को अपनी वो चोरी चुकारी डकैतियों की जो जाहिर है कहीं ना कहीं गुस्सा निकालना है और दूसरी तरफ हमारे पड़ोस में उनके चचा बहुत खुश हैं तो इसलिए चचा भतीजी और कुछ इस तरह के हमलवा इनके हवारी जो है इनकी कनीज़ें जो मीडिया में मौजूद हैं वो लोग बड़े खुश हैं उनको छोड़ कर पूरा पाकिस्तान दिल गिरफ्तार है लेकिन इसके अलावा मैं आपको बताऊँ कि ऑस्ट्रेलिया में मौजूद एक गोरा जो पाकिस्तान गया पाकिस्तानी को अपना दूसरा घर समझता है और अभी दोबारा आने को तैयार है और बहुत मोहब्बत करता है पाकिस्तान से पाकिस्तान के क्रिकेट के बारे में बड़ा अच्छा है डेनिस आप लोग जानते हैं उसे बड़ी अच्छी तरह पहले भी मेरे दफ़ा कई दफ़ा शो में आ चुका है वो भी बहुत दिल गिरफ्तार है लेकिन उसके कुछ बड़े वैलिड पॉइंट्स भी हैं आज एक छोटी सी ब्रेक के बाद उससे तफसील में बात करते हैं कि गोरा जो ऑस्ट्रेलियन बोल गोरा वो क्या सोच रहा है और ऑस्ट्रेलिया के लोग क्या रिएक्शन दे रहे हैं इस तरह न्यूजीलैंड के लोग क्या रिएक्शन दे रहे हैं इन चीज़ों पर थोड़ी सी तफसील में बात करते हैं प्रोग्राम बंद पूरा देखना है और मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल को प्लीज़ सब्सक्राइब और लाइक और बेल का बटन ज़रूर दबाएँ अगली वीडियो जो है वो इंशाल्लाह था कि आप तक आती रहे एक ब्रेक के बाद हम बात करते हैं डेनिस से
because teams don't go to all the effort to go to Pakistan, which is a big effort, and then pull out on the day of the match unless something dramatic has changed. Um, and until we understand the timeline of events and actually get the reasoning and the rationale for leaving other than just there was a security threat, um, I think there's going to be a lot of speculation, a lot of angry people. Um, but uh, I just caution everybody to just take a deep breath, wait a couple of weeks, let the, let, let the rumour mill die and let the facts start coming out and then we can judge whether um, New Zealand were hasty in, in retreating from Pakistan or whether um, they made the right call. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there's probably a touring party there of 25 people um, coaches and players and whatnot, they're all adults. They've made the choice to go to Pakistan and they felt that the security situation was fine before they left. It was clearly fine when they were there, but something has changed and has spooked them. Um, and we don't know what that is. That could have been anything from a security threat to those people. And then you can make an argument around VVIP security and presidential security and whether that's good enough or not. But what if the threat was something like, you know what, New Zealand guys, if you play this match, then we're going to shoot your families back in New Zealand or something. Like, we don't know what the threat was. And until we understand the threat, um, then it's almost impossible for anybody to, to pass judgment on whether New Zealand did the right thing or the wrong thing. Yeah, Dennis, they were practicing in the same ground for five days. And prior to that, they even declared it's a safe heaven. They loved it. They enjoyed Pakistan so much. And one of the top security official armies deployed with them is Zarar, which is one of the famous in, around the world for security reasons. They were for them and the and presidential uh, squad, as you mentioned, they were also given the full security protocols. Um, but still, if it, this is not good enough, what is? You, you, you're making the assumption that the threat was to these guys. What if the threat was to their families back in New Zealand? What if the threat was you know what, if you play this match, we won't get you here, but we'll get you with the T20 World Cup. What if the threat was, I'm going to get you in three years' time? What if the, who knows what the threat was? What if, what if the threat was, if you play, we're going to blow up your airplane when you fly home? Who, who, it doesn't matter, right? We don't know what the f threat was. And until we understand, to simply look at it through the eyes of, hey, look at all the black Vigos that we have with gun turrets on the back, it's such a narrow view of security. Um, again, until we are told what's happened and, and who was threatened, we, we, we can't pass judgment. And right, I think at the moment, New Zealand haven't shared what's happened because until they're out of the country and they're back home safe, where they feel safe, it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what they think. They're the ones that feel threatened. You don't feel threatened. The Pakistani public don't feel threatened. The broadcasters don't feel threatened. But these players do. And they've decided to go home because of it. And until they're home and they feel safe and until the facts come out about what the threat was, then it's all just speculation and we're getting angry about something that we don't have all the facts and can't understand. Speaking of security concerns, back in 2017 when you went, and I'm sure you must have heard a lot of stuff, and you're Australian-born Gora, you didn't feel insecure. Nothing has stopped you. What's your experience now? I first went in 2017 and no Goras were going as a tourist or a journalist to Pakistan in 2017. The memories of Daniel Pearl were still ringing loud and clear. Um, and I've had all the same conversations on the times that I've been to Pakistan that I'm sure the New Zealand guys went through. You know, uh, Osama bin Laden was living in a military town for 10 years. Um, there's radical Islam. There's 300 bombs went off in 2019. Are you sure it's still a safe place? You can catch a crazy disease, you'll get sick. Um, you know, there's guys in the streets with, with guns um, just to protect the population. There's people who can steal your iPhone and kill you for it. You name it. I was, everything gets thrown at you when you say you're going to Pakistan. Even when I got to the airport the first time in Melbourne and I was catching a plane to Abu Dhabi and then to Karachi, the person at Emirates Airlines who I was flying with to to Abu Dhabi said, what's your final destination? I said, Karachi. He said, are you thinking sure? He used the swear word. Like, he's like, are you thinking straight? This is the perceptions that um, for non-Pakistanis, these are perceptions you have to get over if you're going to go to Pakistan. Now, I give the New Zealanders a lot of credit that went because they got over all this stuff to, irrespective of 
what their family and friends were saying, as did the Sri Lankans before them, as did the West Indians before them, as did the South Africans and the World Eleven. And England men and women were meant to be coming in October, right? So a lot of people are starting to get comfortable slowly, slowly. You've also had PSL 5 and 6 played back in Pakistan, and both times over 35 internationals have played. I asked Shane Watson in 2018 at PSL 3, are you going to go to Lahore and Karachi for the finals? He said, no, my wife doesn't want me to go. But in 2020, he was there, right? So baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. People are getting more and more comfortable. But um, this might put it back a little bit. I don't know. But uh, it's not an easy thing for a white person who, who's not from Pakistani origin or, isn't comf- or hasn't travelled to that part of the world much to... to get over all the bad perceptions about Pakistan and make the journey. So I give New Zealand a lot of credit for that. This is what I can't comprehend. Zimbabwe, West Indies, South Africa, Sri Lanka, World Eleven, PSL Finals, all overseas players. And now the threat made to tour cancel? Besides Shwe Bakhtar's tweet, the one he said, this has killed the Pakistan cricket. What do you think of that? Really? Um, Shwe Bakhtar, Ramiz Raja, uh, Mohammad Rizwan, they've all come out with these inflammatory statements which is not befitting of 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 the roles that they currently have to play they don't have the facts i don't have the facts you don't have the facts they're just playing to the populace and trying and trying to inflame and it's especially ramiz raja who is now chairman of the pcb his role is to bring decorum and to bring a sense of calm and objectiveness to this and all he's done is gone and abused publicly the kiwis for a decision they've made because 25 people odd don't feel safe. And unfortunately, when there's a crisis in the PCB, there's still factions in there that behave like little kids. And Ramiz Raja has failed the first test. I think it's going to probably hurt Pakistan cricket for maybe six months. But someone will turn up next year or someone might come in October instead and off it will go again. It'll be fine. Do you think that the Indian media has done some damage by spreading the propaganda or on the social media or it's irrelevant or the actual threat you think could be real? No, nah, I just think that's bullshit. There's uh, the security um, company that's that was in the hotel with Cricket New Zealand. They're a sophisticated bunch. They've been. I first saw them in Pakistan. I saw them when I went to Gaddafi Stadium 2017 to film, and uh, they were there doing a like they're, they're all over Pakistan. They understand the social media rubbish. That's not going to spook anybody. It's going to be real threats. And the other thing. You know, people coming out saying, oh, New Zealand haven't shared with us what the threat was. I don't believe that for one iota. There is no way that the, the New Zealand cricket haven't shared, at least with the ISI or someone locally. They may not have shared it with the police or the PCB. The PCB aren't going to protect uh, the New Zealand players. And as I said, until the facts come out in a week's time, a month's time, whenever they come out, um, I think it's best to sit back and not speculate and, and definitely don't throw... Um, you know, rotten fruit at, at, at the Kiwis. Yes, there's an impact for their decision to go home, but they haven't gone home lightly. You've got to remember that the the decision, the, all the all the gates they've got gone through just to get to Pakistan in the first place for the first time in 18 years. These are big gates, and they've stepped through them. So then to turn home on the day of the match, that's not a small decision. Something has something is seriously happening. That is sure a journalist as well. Pakistani journalist seems very happy. Some of them. And so is a Pakistani politician, even Nawaz Shif's daughter, Maryam Nawaz. She even tweeted, like, they seems like they're really enjoying the situation, that the tours are cancelled and something to rub back, give back to, to Prime Minister Imran Khan. As a journalist, how do you see these laughing and making fun of that? I'd love to ask them. Um, anyone in Pakistan who is joyous at the fact that this cricket is cancelled needs a slap. Um, but I don't, I'm not going to speak. I don't want to speak for idiots. Fair enough. Yeah, what do you think, Dennis, now Pakistan should do? They should call Afghanistan to have a big showcase event to show the world that we are definitely, say, bring Sri Lanka, South Africa or World Eleven or someone else or just sit back and let this time pass and make new strategy for this game to how they're going to go forward. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Like, it's not easy to, especially in COVID environments, to quickly backfill a tour. And even it's even harder to tour to Pakistan because that takes a lot of planning. A lot of safety concerns have been raised. Dennis, what do you think? If you get a chance to go to Pakistan, are you happy to travel to Pakistan now? Yeah, once COVID's died down, I'm definitely going back. I have no reason not to. It's, it's, it's my second home. I love it to death. I've always felt safe there. Um, I've got so many friends there. I, I don't have protocols when I'm there. I've sat in a protocol, a PSL 5. I sat in the protocol between the, uh, the hotels and the, and the grounds, but 
once I was back home at the hotel, I was out in the streets with my friends. Um, at the moment, the only reason I'm not traveling is, as you know, here in Australia, to go overseas is very difficult. Um, so maybe mid next year when everything opens up and everyone's had their vaccinations, then things will change. But uh, um, I'm keen to go back. I'm just, I can't at the moment, but there's nothing stopping me. There's, there's nothing from a security perspective stopping me from going to Pakistan. Dennis, um, you mentioned in your tweets recently for your health, like, you know, I think you look really great. You speak really great, obviously. And uh, my offer for the menu for the food, do you remember we discussed biryani and other dishes still stands. So make some day after the lockdown, I will have some food. Except for dried rice and, and really dry meat. <laughs> Thanks, mate. जी नाजीन आपने डेनिस के इंटरव्यू देखा नाजीन बड़ी इंपॉर्टेंट बात है उसने की उसने कहा कि न्यूजीलैंड के लोग ये खिलाड़ी इस वक्त एक लाइट हार्ट से ये जो इवेंट अभी कैंसिल हुआ है सीरीज कैंसिल हुई है इसको इतना लाइट नहीं लेकर के इसमें कोई शक नहीं कि एक टूर को पॉसिबल करने में एक बड़ा टाइम फ्रेम चाहिए और ये सारा बिहाइंड सीन बहुत सारा काम हुआ हुआ था जो कि ज़ाया होने को उन्हें भी उतना ही अफसोस है जिस दिन बारिश हो जाए और हम क्रिकेट ना खेल सकें उस दिन वो पूरा दिन बड़ा मुश्किल गुजरता है यहाँ पर तो ये पूरे का पूरा सीज़न छोड़ कर जा रहे थे तो जाहिर है वो भी बड़े दुखी हैं क्रिकेट फैंस भी दुखी हैं पाकिस्तानी भी दुखी हैं अगर नहीं दुखी तो जो सियासतदान और मीडिया के जो लोग हैं जिनके बारे में डैलेंस ने कहा एक थप्पड़ लगाना चाहिए मैं उनके बारे में कुछ नहीं कहता लेकिन वो बेवकूफ़ और जाहिल लोग हैं मैं भी उनको यही समझता हूँ अगली वीडियो तक के लिए मुझे इजाज़ है अपना खास ख्याल रखें और चैनल को ज़रूर सब्सक्राइब और जो बेल का बटन है दबाएँ ताकि आप तक ये वीडियोज़ जो है अगले इंटरव्यूज़ जो है वो आप तक आते रहें और अपना फीडबैक से ज़रूर आगाह करें अपना ख्याल ख्याल रखें अल्लाह हाफ़